Well, there's nothing quite like starting a video and uh, the rain starts to come down. It's a pretty miserable day down here at Conway and hopefully that rain stays off to let me complete this test. And this test is an interesting one. It's a product that I got sent from a company called Maisel, a Chinese company. They make a variety of products um, and we might look at a few more of them in the future. But this is a very interesting one they've sent me and it certainly opened my eyes when I opened the box. It's a wedge. It's very much a specialist wedge. It's very much different than any other wedge I've seen before. And that's largely due to the way it looks. And that's where we'll start back in the warmth. And I'll go quickly through what this thing looks like and then back to me and hopefully it stops raining. Right, okay, so let's start by that odd looking front, those grooves that we've never seen before and uh, they're cut out, they're completely clear. The rest of the face, there is a very fine milling that you probably can't pick up from the camera, but believe me, it's there. But I'm struggling to see at this point how we're going to get any kind of control in terms of spin and how we've traditionally got it in terms of that uh, groove pattern that we'd see across a club face. So that's an interesting one. The next bit I want to have a look at is that top line. The top line is very thin to be fair, it's not always expected in terms of what we'd expect from this type of club, in terms of uh, I thought it would be a bit thick, a bit of bulk and mass. And then if I just turn that round a bit, if you just have a look at the, the cavity in there, the, the distance between the actual sole and that top line is huge. And obviously if I just, can I just see, yeah, you can see that completely clear in terms of those slats cut out the front. And when we talk about bunker play, are we going to see that uh, sand passing through there and making life easier? We'll wait and see. The bottom of the club face again is really interesting. It's very, very wide in terms of the sole. It's going to sit very tight to the turf. It'd be interesting to see how it cuts through sand and what impact it has there. But I always think these kind of wide soles, what we've seen in terms of that bounce, is a great help for uh, average golfers in and around greens. And you can almost play it like a chipper, I would imagine, is how this is going to work in and around greens but it's a very interesting one to look at if we just finish off by that look on that front there and if you can see the color in it's almost it goes from a purple to a turquoise to a golden color again be interested to see how that sort of appears on the eye in terms of uh, some sunnier weather but in terms of looks i think this is very much a marmite product and uh yeah that's a difficult one to get your head around to start with so like i said in the intro quite a bit different than what you'd expect in the norm and first of all this is essentially classed as a sand wedge. That's what Mays will call it. It's got 55 degrees worth of loft on it. And as you've seen, the expectancy is, I can only, there's no tech spec with this, by the way. No tech spec from Maisel, so certainly not one from me. And uh, a lot of you don't like all these marks and blurbs, so you'll be happy with that. But for my mind, as a sand wedge, the only thing I can see that it does is that flat bottom sole is hopefully going to cut through this sand nice and easily. And the second thing is those wide grooves that are cut to the face, the sand is going to pass through and allow the club head to glide through that sand that little bit easier. That's the only logic I can put to it. And like I said, that's from me, not from Maisel. So we'll start off in exactly that position in a bunker, a little bit heavy the sand this time of year, but in reality, that's what we're going to play certainly in the UK. So why not put it to a test in some real conditions? The interesting thing is, first of all, at a dress, just to talk about, because of that wide bottom sole, there's no sort of, I suppose you could try and sort of open this up to give a little bit more loft if you had a little bit more of a bunker face in front of you. But it sets up kind of square and it sort of encourages a sort of very much a straight through uh, shot. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. We've got not a huge lip and we've got a fair bit of green to work with. Well, trust me, and you can believe it or believe it not, that is the very first shot I've played with this wedge. And uh, I've left a little bit jaw drop there because, as I explained it, I swear to God, it did exactly what I never felt any sand whatsoever through impact there. Now, it's a fairly fluffy lie, even though the sand is a bit heavy. But seriously, that's a real interesting start because I never felt... Well, as you know, you normally play, you play a bit of a bunker shot and when you're through impact, you'll feel a little bit of weight of the sand hit the club face and you've got to sort of force your way through it a little bit. That didn't do that one bit in that lie that we had there. 
Now, a few weeks ago, you'll have seen me test this club, which was a chipper. And I think this we worked this back to uh, maybe was it about 45 degrees sort of loft on this, similar to what was in a pitching wedge. And it was a very versatile club. And I sort of suggested that it could make its way into a lot of uh, average golfers bags and help them out if they were struggling with the chipping. Now, it's interesting this because it's the same principle. It's a very wide bottom sole, one that suggests just a putting stroke. I'm on about now this Maisel Club. And again, it's very flat to the ground. And you'd think that adopting the same principles in terms of a putting style type of stroke might do similar things. The issue we had with the chipper was with 45 degrees worth of loft, it was okay for this kind of shot, chip and run, but if you wanted a bit of loft to get over a bunker or some kind of obstacle, it proved to be a little bit of a problem. So it'll be interesting to see, first of all, playing this shot, if we can execute it, and secondly, what it does in terms of, uh, what it does in terms of loft. A bit of mud on that. So I'm gonna play it, like I said, very much a kind of putting stroke. I haven't given enough there, but it's interesting. It's not too bad. And it does exactly what I expected it to do. Again, slide just sort of that bounce, use that bounce along the, uh, the tight lie that we've got here at Conway. Just slides across, picked it up nice and clean. No, uh, no, no ground interaction whatsoever. That ball clipped off the top. Yet I didn't quite give it enough to get it to the hole. But again, it does, like I said, very similar characteristics to what we've seen in the chipper. And gets that ball going towards the hole in a straight line. And you haven't got to do a great deal as an average golfer except apply that kind of putting stroke, which simplifies things. And I like that as an average golfer. Well, the rain and the weather is not being kind to me, but I'm determined to carry on with this review and there might be a bit of a brighter sky coming. So interestingly enough, like I said, from a short chipping area, from a bunker, it seems to be half decent, to be honest with you. I'm quite impressed so far. But it's a 55 degree wedge and if you're going to have this club in your bag it's got to have a little bit of versatility otherwise it's becoming a bit of a luxury to carry just for certain type of shots. We're playing into the wind here, I've got about 50, 60 yards maybe I would think. How does it fare in a kind of a fuller shot? And that'll be interesting. Wow, well, do you know what, that's incredible pickup. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's that's unreal, that is. Jesus, tonight. I, I'm a bit gobsmacked, to be honest with you, because it's not what I was expecting. I, and again, once again, that is the first shot with distance, of a distance, that I have played. It was in a little bit. We haven't quite made it to the fairway, actually. It was in a little bit of a lie there. And once again, the interesting thing for me is, just looking at this, is to how... It's a strange one in terms of the, the impact because you feel very little and again it might be just in the head, maybe I've caught a ball nice and clean. But the actual feel element is quite decent, it's, it's quite surprising yet again that sort of flat bottom sole that uh, cut through that kind of lie that I had there somewhere, I can't remember, but there was definitely a bit of grass around the ball and it just seemed to get its way through it fairly easily. It's not what I was expecting, seriously, in every position it surprised me in a very positive way and I wasn't expecting this review to come out this way, I'll be honest with you. That's the bit that baffles me. I don't understand how it does that because what I can't work out, and I said there's no tech spec with this, but what I said on the intro was when we looked at the, um, the face itself, there's no groove pattern on it whatsoever. We've just got the cutout elements. So what I can't understand there, I just played a shot there, which I'd normally play with my wedge in that position, which is a little bit of a stab down on the back of it and try and get a little bit of a check on that second and third bounce. And it did it. It surprisingly did it. I mean, we're playing on softer greens. We're in the middle of the winter here, so it'll be interesting to see how this performed in the height of summer. But you can definitely feel, you know yourself, when you hit a sort of club against the ball, you can feel that sort of, that impact. And it definitely sort of slowed itself up uh, on that second and third bounce, like I said. And that's the bit I don't conf I'm confused with, but only in a positive way. There's not a negative. I just don't understand how that face, it defies what we know. And what we know is that traditionally in our head is that the grooves is what produces the spin. There's no grooves on this. So how does that possibly grab into the ball? And how do those vertical slots impact on control? I don't know, but it does it.
Then we're going to finish where we started in a bunker, but a fairly, uh, yeah, pretty steep one. You don't want to be in this bunker if you get into this, uh, on this par three at Conway. It's not a great one. I've played a couple of bunker shots since, and it's still impressive. Like I said, I'm uh, intrigued, I suppose is the thing, as to how this sand does cut through. One thing I will mention, uh, wet conditions, like I said, out here at Conway Golf Club, and the grooves start to clog a little, um, as does that big hollow back that we've seen. So that's one negative, you would have to be able to, uh, you'd have to clean this out somehow because otherwise, like I said, even with a few wax on the ground in this uh, wet conditions here today, they're starting to clog up a little bit. Right, final shot, not one that you want. Can we pop this ball up and will this continue to surprise me? And the answer, if that goes in, the answer has got to be yes. And you can see... I'm not the most animated of people, but this one's got me confused because it does do a very good job. In summary, there's a couple of things I want to point out. This club is, is not cheap. It's 80 quid uh, on Amazon, and I'll put the link down below. But it's still not a cheap club whatsoever, and uh, it's very much like I said, I thought it was going to be a club that you would use. Um, few and far between, I suppose. So it'd be a bit of a luxury club in the bag, a bit like that we looked in the chipper a few weeks back. An 80 quid for a luxury club, being that you've got to drop someone out, can be a bit of a negative. But out here on the course, tested it, and you've seen the different situations we've been in, it's a very playable club. And all I can say is surprise. The club is definitely not for everybody. It's not by no means a forge type of feel out of it, but at the same time, what it doesn't do, it's not clicky, it's not, it's not hollow, it's not, you know, it's, it's not echoey in its sound. It's, it's, it's a good feeling club. The bit with the spin or the control, wherever you want, however the ball's coming to stop, it seems to do a decent enough job. The sand, the idea, the concept in my head as to what it's supposed to do through sand, it seems to do. I've just got no more words to explain it, really. Like I said, it was a bit of a, it's a surprising review. Perhaps not the outcome I expected, far more positive than I expected, and that you should not go into anything with any preconceived ideas. But when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, yeah, mm, maybe not. But having played it, I'm pleasantly surprised to say the least. And I think the bigger picture is, not to go on too much, is that for average golfers, yet again, we looked at a chipper. We've looked at this special speciality sandwich, whatever you want to call it. But it's that wide bottom sole, I think, that plays a major part in making life easy for average golfers and that's what it's all about but as ever comment down below tell me what you think of the performance i asked you what you thought of it in terms of looks what do you think of it in terms of performance are you as shocked as me anyway thanks for watching i'm going to go in although it's not too bad now at least it stopped raining but uh, i'm freezing it's time for a warm see you in a bit